Hello everyone and welcome back to this day in history, our nightly look back at a specific day in history where we take a look back at the events of that day, the historic context in which those events took place, and the historic ramifications of those events. We also take a look at some people that were born on that day and some people that died on that day. If you have not yet, please hit that subscribe button the bell notification icon to be alerted anytime I post new content, and please tell a friend. And without any further ado, this day in history, April the 9th, 10th. On this day, in 1912, the RMS Titanic of the White Star Line set sail from Southampton on its maiden voyage. Um, unfortunately, this would be its only voyage. The ship was the most luxurious and largest ship in the sea at the time of its launch. The ship was said to be unsinkable. It was sinkable. The ship, of course, would hit an iceberg off the coast of Newfoundland and, because of a lack of lifeboat, suffered many casualties. The sh captain of the ship went down with the ship, and the band reportedly played My God to Thee, which, incidentally enough, is the song that CNN pla plans to play in a recording by the U.S. Navy Band when they confirm the world is ending. So, if you hear that song, come on CNN. It's not good. Um, but in all honesty, this is a, um, a tragedy, and it led to many reforms um, in the cruise industry. Chief among them was uh, requiring uh, sufficient lifeboats uh, to um, facilitate um, room for... Um, everyone on the ships. Uh, the ship included many uh, prominent and rich citizens, uh, but it also included a large number of um, immigrants who were uh, seeking uh, to better themselves in the United States of America and seek the treasures and promise of our country on our shores. And we always need to remember that, that not only was it wealthy signs of wealth on that ship, but there was a lot of people that were looking to better themselves and their lives in the United States. Um, the lives they left behind in the United Kingdom um, and the parts of Europe they were leaving at that time uh, were very tough and very hard lives. Uh, the United Kingdom at that time uh, suffered from great wealth inequality um, and the people that lived in the lower clungs of society lived in very horrible and dire conditions. Um, and that's something we need to remember um, whenever we talk about the Titanic, that these people that died, the ones that went down on that ship, were those people. And that always, always needs to be remembered. Um, births that occurred on this day. Francis Perkins in 1880 in Boston, Massachusetts. Uh, Miss Perkins uh, was the Secretary of Labor uh, for President Roosevelt and President Truman, serving from 1933 until the summer of 1945. Uh, Secretary Perkins, as Secretary of Labor, uh, really pushed through a lot of reforms, uh, minimum wage, uh, unemployment pensions, uh, safer working conditions, was very instrumental and a key player along with Harold Ickes, who was the Secretary of Interior, um, in promoting um, Franklin Roosevelt's uh, New Deal. Um, and she had long been an ally and loyal supporter of Roosevelt. Um, and there had been uh, mentions of a female joining the cabinet in the previous four administrations, uh, but Roosevelt was the first to act on it. Um, and thus, when she became 
uh, Secretary of Labor, she became the first female uh, to ever enter the presidential line of succession. Um, so she's also a trailblazer in that sense. Uh, since then, uh, females have gone on to serve in many capacities in the presidential cabinet. Uh, most notably among them is Madeleine Albright, Dr. Condoleezza Rice, and former Senator Hillary Clinton, who all served as Secretaries of State, which is, of course, the most prominent cabinet position and the most directly in line for the presidential line of successions. Females in our government have also achieved much higher positions, and one currently does, and that is the first office mentioned in the United States Constitution, which is currently held by a female that being the Speaker of the House of Representatives, who is held by Nancy Pelosi of the state of California. Ms. Perkins, um, as I said, was a strong supporter of improving labor conditions for workers. Interestingly enough, though, when she was appointed by Roosevelt, the American Federation of Labor opposed her nomination because they didn't believe she had strong enough ties to labor. Of course, those concerns would be evaded and she would be a strong, passionate voice for workers in this country. Deaths that occurred on this day. Rule Hector Castro, 2015, at the age of 98 in San Diego. Uh, Mr. Castro uh, served as ambassador uh, to some Central American countries, uh, from 1964 to 1969 under Presidents Johnson and Nixon. He would later again serve as U.S. Ambassador to Argentina from 1977 to 1980. He was Governor of Arizona from 1975 until 1977. Uh, his time as Governor is very controversial. He had... Um, from what I've read, he was not really interested in being governor. He was more interested in the title of governor, um, and that was something to him that was uh, more important. Um, he had supported Carter um, in Carter's run in 76 for president, campaigning for him in Arizona, um, even though Ford would win Arizona. Um in 77, um, he was offered basically an escape route to, from being governor um, and was given the ambassadorial ship uh, to Argentina. Um, although his time as ambassador was kind of um, fraught and rocky, as many Argentinians um, were not particularly pleased that the United States had picked someone who was a Mexican-American as the ambassador uh, to Argentina. Um, as I said, he was a Mexican-American, and on his 96th birthday, in a 100-degree heat without water, outside of a vehicle, he was detained by the United States Border Patrol because the vehicle he was in set off a radiation sensor. The reason it had went off is a medical procedure he had had performed earlier caused this to occur. On the man's 96th birthday, a former governor of a state detained by the Border Patrol and I'm not even going to get into that issue. It gets me too fired up. The former governor uh, would be the oldest living former governor at the time of his death in 2015. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you tomorrow.